Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Before I start, first kill graphic novel. So just as I always do when I do these video reviews, here's Kindle. I actually paid for this thing. It's basically a miserable experience to read this on a computer. What the fuck is this? It's terrible. It's like the worst way to read a comic. So uh, I hated this. Greg Capullo on art and then Todd McFarlane was going to ink it. While I knew Todd McFarlane was going to write it, I have read very little Todd McFarlane. So I just assumed he would bring his A-game, and uh, he doesn't have an A-game when it comes to writing. One of the most gratifying things of reading this awful book is I was confused by the plot, and I felt stupid. Because I was like, it's a Batman Spawn comic, and you don't understand the plot. So I went to go read other people's reviews, and... I actually did understand the plot. I understood it perfectly. It's just stupid. I was blaming myself. I'm a fan of Todd McFarlane's art from 1988 to about 1992, and eh, maybe till the mid 1990s. Uh, he's basically really doesn't draw much anymore. He's more of a business guru than an artist. But he's dipped back in, he's done inking, he's done a couple of pieces here and there. But really, he hasn't been a full-time artist for 25 years. As far as I can tell, he is digitally inking this, and it's not good. I mean, the cover's okay, but the interiors are adequate. I forgot that Todd McFarlane was inking it, and I was like, oh, who's the workman-like Joe Schmo inker of this? And then I checked the... Uh, credits and it's Todd McFarlane. I watched a video from a few days ago where Mark Millar interviewed Greg Capullo and um, I kind of knew there was going to be some problems because he was not enthused about it. Greg wasn't. Mark is enthused about everything. You could tell Mark Ovaltine still exists and he would be excited for some reason. He's a very excitable chap. Greg was saying all the right things but you could see in his eyes like so at one point he said that when he signed on for this, he was given a lot of time. He was basically told he would have a week to do every page. And then it took such a long time to negotiate with the lawyers on both sides that by the end, I think he said he had like two months to do this entire book. And it's noticeable. Not because the rendering is bad ever, but because it's an entire book of medium shots. Almost everything is a medium shot. A medium shot is, you know, waist up, flat angle, basically the angle you take most photographs at. There are a few dynamic pages like this, but then you get reminded that you're reading the dialogue and the captions in the story. And this story is fucking stupid. Todd McFarlane is annoying. <laughs> he's annoying and he's arrogant and he had a heyday. Financially, his whole life has been a heyday, although apparently he declared bankruptcy like 15 years ago, but he's recovered from that. But uh, all I kept thinking about while reading his obnoxious, dreary, repetitive writing, I kept thinking of a small town celebrity. I'm not talking like really small, like 300 people. I'm talking like an Abilene, Texas, a Tumwa, Iowa. One of those cities where you kind of heard of the name and if you've lived in those cities, you have the local celebrity. And usually it is some combination of they used to work in professional sports, they're on one of the news channels, or they have a car dealership. So I just imagined Todd McFarlane as a guy who used to play pro ball. In real life, I believe he played the uh, farm leagues and then he got injured. And then he went back to his hometown. He started a car dealership. He's in the commercials, and then he married the weather lady. And you see him there at the Piggly Wiggly, and he's so fucking full of himself and condescending, and you just want to get away from him. And that's what his writing is like. Like, he does these, like, I'm a smart guy things. They do this a lot in stories where they have two heroes meet up with each other. Although, does Spawn even qualify as an anti-hero? You're a government assassin who sold your soul to the devil. So he does this weird ass thing where he's like, oh yeah, Batman and Spawn, they're pretty much the same. 
They both got in fights when they were younger. Okay. And one was rich and one was poor. Okay. And the most important thing to them was the women they lost in their lives. Oh, you're not going to mention his father? So Todd McFarlane can't write worse shit. He's actively gotten worse over the past 30 years. I assume that any crossover like this exists in some sort of else world. There is a visual reference to the previous Spawn Batman books, but they don't really act like they have much history. In fact, it almost seems like it could be just like a retcon, that one visual reference. But like he does stuff that makes no fucking sense. Like he's like, they're so similar. Spawn's wife died the same day that Batman's mother was killed. But they're both presented as if they're like men around 40 years old. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, it's because they're in different dimensions and the way the dimensions line up. And you're like, God damn it. Like, no, none of that makes sense. We get this short fight that's kind of okay. Except for, again, it just doesn't make much sense. It's Spawn, who has incredible superpowers, against Batman fighting in an alley. And you're like, this is not a contest. Spawn is going to win this one. We meet the main villain who is a guy. That's it. He's a guy. Here's the visual reference to the Spawn Batman written by Frank Miller and drawn by Todd McFarlane like 25 years ago. But in an earlier panel, Spawn is surprised to find out that Batman is human. It's like you've met twice before. This dialogue, man. I get it. I know they trained you to think from the neck down. That's how you survived. I tried that too for a while. Nearly got me killed a dozen times. Now I use what's above my neck. My brain. <laughs> this is some Mystery Science Theater 3000 type of stuff. Like, you can tell in Todd's head, like, this is so dramatic. Like, you're supposed to go, he uses what's above his neck? His jaw? <laughs> so stupid. Believe it or not, the writing gets worse. So at some point, Todd realized that, oh, generic corporate dudes in a board meeting room and Talon from the Scott Snyder run, that's probably not enough to really sell this. Let's get the Joker in here. Okay, so how do we write the Joker into the story? He's just sitting in a room. He's just sitting in a room in a chair. And he looks like he briefly did in the Scott Snyder run from 10 years ago. Except for when you reference the Spawn continuity, it's the modern continuity. It's, it's the new continuity from like last year where he's got a team. So Spawn's wife and Batman's mother died on the same day, even though they should have died decades apart. And we're going to mishmash Spawn continuity from now with Batman continuity from 10 years ago. Why not? Then they just let him go. They get some information and they just leave. Now you might say, oh, maybe that was a cell in Arkham. No, it's not. It's not. It's just an empty room somewhere because they're going to go to Arkham later and the Joker is not there. So then we get a kind of cool portfolio piece, but is it really that cool? They're not doing anything. He's like, uh, what's your wife's maiden name? He's like, oh, she never changed it. It's like, yeah, no shit. She got remarried like two seconds after you died. Uh, so he's like, oh, it's Blake. He's like, okay, that'll be our code word for later in the battle. So this is the main battle over in Arkham. And the yard in Arkham is a dead zone, so supernaturally powered people are not as supernaturally powered here. Talon then starts beating the brakes off of Spawn, who we really haven't seen do anything that special. In fact, if you don't read the Spawn comics, you would probably think he's a fairly low-powered character. It's weird that Todd wrote this and completely diminished his own character. At this point, Todd doesn't know how to end it, so he just throws in a shock kill by Batman. Except, it's not really Batman. It's Spawn appearing as Batman. And then we get to what is probably the worst writing I have ever encountered. Not just in five years of reviewing modern comics, but in 40 years of reading them. So Talon says, Last chance, Batman. You help open the portal where I slit Simmons's throat, then break his... <laughs> ah! 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 
I swear to God, Batman, I'm going to kill this man twice. <laughs> You're going to slit his throat and then break his neck. <laughs> the only thing stupider is if he would have ripped off that old cartoon. I think it was Far Side, where he's like, back off, Batman, or I shoot myself and then spawn. Like, what the fuck? You help open the portals, or I slit Simmons' throat, then break his neck. <laughs> oh, fuck. So I've made fun for years of diversity hires like Mags and Gabby Rivera. But even though most of their writing is bad, there are moments. There are moments when it works. And I haven't gotten one of those in this entire book. So then Batman says, go ahead, do it. I don't care. He just killed a man. But when you do, I release this button and this entire asylum shuts down. Every cell in here will open. You'll never take over Gotham. You know why? It won't be Superman or Flash who stops you. It'll be them, the villains. Talon is, of course, confused because this makes no sense. He says, what about you? They'll tear you apart. Maybe, but not at first. They may hate me, but there's one thing they hate more. That's anyone who helped make me. You just told everyone that was you. Oh, sorry, time out. First of all, how do you know this? Second of all, how many people helped make you? Third of all, this is the worst bluff ever. So your bluff is that... If he kills Al Simmons, you will release all of the criminals in Arkham Asylum who between all of them, actually between just the heavy hitters, have killed tens of thousands of people. And you're going to release them so they will kill Talon? But you're punishing him for kill. What? But you were angry when Spawn killed the guy. But he looked like you. And then Talon says, hey, you're bluffing. Then kill Simmons. And while you're at it, kill me too. So I'll release this button. Oh, it's a dead man switch, I guess. Then who will save your mom's soul? No one. Hers was taken long ago. Like Wanda's. Like Simmons's. That's why you needed me, isn't it? My soul's still intact. I don't know. You just risked tens of thousands of lives for the world's dumbest bluff. That's what you were so desperate for. My humanity. The one weapon all of you lost long ago. I don't know. I don't know about that one. And then he shouts. This is so stupid. He shouts Spawn's wife's maiden name. And then Spawn knows, oh, it was all just a bluff. He really wasn't the stupidest person ever. So he opens up his cape and he swallows up the talon inside of it. Feels like something you could have done way earlier. And then the story's just over. It's just like one page later, it's over. With a hint of a sequel. Good night, nurse. This was terrible. But you know what isn't terrible? First Kill Graphic Novel. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.